my spirit, uh, we just finished a series about Love Never Fails. And um, that was an amazing series. And so now, obviously, God wants to move on and discuss some new things. We are going to be talking about faith today and the depths of it. All right? So we definitely want to get into that because I believe that faith separates seeing the manifestation of God from hearing about the manifestation of God. And so I want to talk about that today. So we're going to go uh, into the book of Mark. And I'm going to read this, and then we're going to pray, and we'll go ahead and go in. So if you want to open up with me with your Bibles or your phone, whatever you use, Mark chapter 5, okay? And then we're going to go verse 35 through 43. Mark chapter 5, verses 35 through 43. I get an amen once you find it, and I'm going to start. Reading from the uh, NIV. Amen. 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 All right. Starting in verse 35, it says, While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told them, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kaun, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. I want to talk to you today. My message title is "You Can't Go." You can't come with me. You can't come with me. See, what I know is about what Jesus did here. There was two different times in this passage where he had to separate himself from people who had little faith. It's very important that we recognize in this day and age those who lack faith those who have faith so we know who we can connect with when we're trying to see a move of God. And I think about miracles all the time. We, you know, we think about all the different miracles that Jesus performed. He did a lot of great things. But I just don't know, and this is my opinion, I'm not saying this is biblical or not, but in my opinion, I feel like the greatest miracle that he could perform is bringing someone back to life that was dead. That's just my opinion. You know, don't, don't send me an email about that. All right? But I just believe that the greatest miracles that he performed was when he took someone who was dead, noticeably dead, noticeably dead, right? After three days, you know the Jewish custom is, you know, in, in that first three days of death, there's still hope that you come back alive. So they still pray over that body, still believe it to come back. But he usually waits to the fourth day or the fifth day. Once all hope is gone, and then he shows you his resurrected power. Amen. But to bring someone back from death, to me, this is one of the greatest things that he actually has done. Because a person who was sick with leprosy or you know, or was blind, those are great miracles, and I'm not trying to discredit any of those, but to be able to bring someone who has absolutely no life in their body back to a place of full restoration means a lot to me. He has a way of doing that in my life, and I don't know if you guys can relate with me, but there's been a lot of situations in my life where I would look at a situation as if it was dead. And I'm ready to turn my back on that situation and move on, but I just give one last cry, and he comes and he fixes the situation. See, because I was ready, like you said earlier, Brother Shabbat, you gave up. That's when God moves the most, when we're ready to give up, when we're ready to stop trying to do everything in our own power, in our own might. Then he steps in and lets you know that my resurrection power still works. Amen. 
So, mm -mm. I'm gonna challenge your faith today. Are y'all okay with that? Yes, sir. Come oh, on, y'all get quiet on me. Yeah. See, some 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 of y'all know me, some of y'all don't. I love to challenge because I, I don't want to just sit here and preach that God is good and God is love, which He is. Because there's there comes a point where we have to come outside of that and we have to go deeper. Amen. So today is going to be a day where I'm going to challenge you a little bit in your faith because we are all in a season. I'm pretty sure different seasons of our lives. We're in a place where we're seeking God for something more. And in order to get more, in order to see more, we have to believe more. Amen. We cannot enter a dead situation with dead faith and expect resurrection power to manifest. Y'all with me on that? So Jesus, he didn't see Jairus' daughter as dead. He saw her as sleep. Y'all get that in the spirit for me. He didn't envision her, envision her as dead. He saw her as sick. Now, was she actually dead? Possibly so. But his faith was at such a point where, guess what? Upon my presence, I know that she would be resurrected. And so what we miss here is the fact that Jairus was actually no longer dead, but they were still claiming her to be dead. He had to reveal to them that you guys came to me telling me that this person is dead, but y'all didn't even realize that my presence alone has resurrected her. So at this point, she's not dead. Even though you say she is, she's just sleeping. So when we look at how this all took place, we first begin with when he first got the news. When he first got the news, he was out teaching somewhere else. And so they came to him and said, hey, your daughter is dead. So what's the point of even bothering the teacher anymore? And I'm going to touch on that, too, in a little bit. But I want to I wanna address the fact that when he left to go and deal with that situation. Now, mind y'all, this is Jesus we talk about. If somebody comes and says, such and such is dead, I just believe that he takes that as a challenge. Because if he didn't, then why would he go? So anyways, he said, I'll be there. But he didn't take all of his disciples with him. And this is what I want to touch on today. He didn't take all his disciples with him. Only three people came with him. This is why I say that not everybody can come with him. He only had three people with him. And when I look at this situation, not everybody has the faith to believe at the level that is needed in order for the miracle to manifest. I can't bring you with me and expect you to agree with me to have resurrection power take place in this person's life if you don't believe for yourself that it can happen. So he only took with him those that would believe that it could happen. See, those with great faith are typically those that are great visionaries. They can already see the situation defeated so they don't spend time dwelling on the problem. They just recognize this is just a technicality. We gotta get through this. See, I already see that she's not dead. I see that she's just asleep. And all I have to do is speak the word and tell her to rise up and she'll get up. So I recognize on a deeper level because I have this great faith, I recognize that it's not about what you see. It's not about her being dead because she's not. I look at this problem as a situation or an opportunity to see God move. So Jesus knows that he can't have any doubters in the midst. It's always a good thing to see, you know, when you see a whole bunch of people praying, and we feel moved by, you know, you get about 50 or 60 people holding hands and praying, and it's a beautiful thing to see. But it does you no good if 45 of them lack faith. And a lot of times we have these big circles. We, everybody's, you know, you got a few people praying and everybody else is listening, and you just believe that everybody in that circle is just on fire. And just, yeah, we're all in agreement, we're all in agreement. But then you got rid of some in there that don't really believe this prayer that you're praying, that just in the circle. <coughs> and so what this is what I want to show you is we gotta be careful with how many people we allow in our circle when we're trying to pray and believe God for great things. Mm. Jesus knew that. So he only had a few people come with him. And then when he got there, there were doubters in the house. And we can go back to the scripture. I'll show you exactly how it went. It was so funny that you look at this. It's, it's hilarious. It says, oh, he's sleeping, right? It says, but they laughed at him. Those are doubters, right? 
But the very next, the very next verse, after he put them all out. <laughs> See, he's not dealing with the problem. He's going to go ahead and get to the solution. Okay, y'all are doubters. I need y'all to get out. Because I know what is about to happen, but because you don't, you're going to taint the atmosphere. So I need you to go. I need you to get out. Get on out here. So it's, it's beautiful how that happens. It says, after he put them all out, he didn't waste no time then. Just, just y'all get out. And I know the word of God that says that we only need two or three for him to show up. Is that true? Yeah. We only need for two or three to show up, and then he'll be in the midst. And so having a room full of people wasn't really necessary. It looks good. And everyone in there may feel good if they see the power work, but the reality is we just need to. Hmm. There is power in agreement. And the Bible says that whatsoever we agree on, you know how a lot of people say, talk about touch and agree? Touching is cool, but the agreement is the part that moves God. Yeah. Amen? Amen. He says that whatever we agree on, so we can hold hands, we can hug, and lay all out at the altar and all that stuff, but if we don't agree, that follow behind it because I believe it enough to follow through. So in our prayers, when we're praying together and we're talking about believing God to do something, it should not be an idle belief because that's like an oxymoron. Idle action. It doesn't go together. So we have to come to that place where we recognize that if I believe this, there has to be some sort of an action to go behind it. Now we look at the word agree. These are two key components when we're talking about faith and, and coming together in prayer. In the Hebrew, it's symphonale, which means to call out with and to be in harmony with. How many of y'all know that sometimes people will go with you, but it doesn't necessarily mean they'll agree with you? And let's go over to uh, Sister Such and Such's house and pray for her, and let's just believe God to just break all the issues off because she's got all these issues. Let's just believe God to break all these things off. Sometimes people will go with you because you ask them to, not because they believe God to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is why I say we have to be careful with who we call upon to touch and agree with when it comes to matters in our lives where faith is the answer. So I told y'all I was going to challenge y'all, right? I'm, I'm getting that. I'm getting that. <laughs> All right. Come on. If I'm believing God, do a mighty thing in my life on a higher level than I've ever seen before. This is where we are right now in the middle of this impossible uh, season of, of impossible things. I can't ask someone who don't have the faith that's at least at my level to join with me in this endeavor. See, because faith, let me say it this way. Let me be careful how I say this. Your faith has to be able to pull me up, not tear me down. See, when we look at verse 35 in this text, 
they were saying to him, listen, man, she's dead. What's the point of even talking to the teacher anymore? This is good. This is good. What's the point of even talking to the teacher? What's the point of seeking God anymore? It's already finished. What you was hoping won't happen has happened. So what's the point of pursuing Jesus anymore? See, this is what we're talking about here about faith. But then the very next verse, Jesus said, don't mind them. Just believe. Because I don't care what you see. If you just believe, that's not the end. Amen? Amen. So to agree, it means to call out with. You have to be infested in order for you to agree. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? There has to be a level of investment in order for you to agree. You say that you agree with me, that means you're taking on my prayers for yourself. Y'all get this in your spirit? Don't just agree with me and then leave it like it is. If you're agreeing with me, and I believe in God to do something mighty, if you agree with me, you are taking upon my prayers with you. And you can't take them on unless you have the faith to believe that it's already done. So who do you have praying with you? Who do you have praying for you? Who do you call on when you need somebody to help you to agree on something that's greater than what you can agree on by yourself? So I'm in a place now, personally, where when I know that I need God to move in a mighty way, very selective who I call to pray for me, to pray with me. Because if your faith can't pull me up, then I don't need you in this situation. It's that personal. Don't be offended. But I know that what I need God to do, I need him to pull me to another level. I need to be in agreement with somebody who can see up here. Mm. If you can't see up here, you can't pray with me. You can't agree with me because it's too it's out of your pay grade. Come on, somebody. This is above your pay grade. You don't understand what I'm trying to get to, so therefore I can't, I can't even go to war with you in this situation because you don't even believe high enough for me to even get there. So we can't, uh uh So you stay here. That's what Jesus, you stay here, I'm going there. I'm going with people that can believe with me. Amen? Amen. Have I offended anybody today? No, sir. So what I want to challenge you on, don't submit to vision and defeat of God. Come together and be fresh. If you don't believe God to do what you're hearing in the prayers, you got two choices. Get out the prayer circle. Or just pray, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. But don't just sit there and say amen like you all on board and you can just see it already done when you really can't because we're submitting the vision at the feet of God. He doesn't move in that. Y'all with me today? He doesn't move in that. So either you got two choices. Either you can get out the circle and keep it right. Now I'm in the book, y'all. He didn't take everybody with him to that house because he knew everybody didn't have the faith. He only took a select chosen few and those who was in the house that didn't have faith. He told them to get out of the house. So there's a separation that has to take place at some point in time to see God manifest. Y'all don't believe, y'all need y'all to get out. Can't nobody be in here except those who believe. Those who have the faith enough to see this healing take place, those are the only ones allowed in this room. When you're serious enough to see God move, you won't just allow anybody to pray for you. You won't allow anybody, I'm sorry, let me say that back, you can pray with you. Because see, if you don't have the faith, that I have or that I need, you can pray for me. You just can't pray with me. Come on, somebody. That sound mean, though. It's supposed to, but I'm, just, I'm in the book. That's all. I, I'm in the book, y'all. You can pray for me. You just can't pray with me. So there's an outer court. Go there. Amen? Go there and pray. That's if you're not offended. If you are offended, don't pray for me at all. But if you're not offended, go there. Go to the outer court and just pray for me. But if you're with me, if you can see this already done, Come on to the inner court with me. I need you in here with me so we can get this thing done. I need to see God move. You need to see it. You can already see it done. Come on. Come on in here with me. Because we got to get it done. It's up to us to lay hands. It's up to us to pray. But it's up to him to move. He's not going to move if doubt is in the midst. Mm. So we got to separate right now. So I just need you to be real with me. Do you see this already done? Is this already in your spirit that is handled? That God is in control and he's going to do exactly what it is that we asked him to do? Do you see that? And if there's any doubt, don't come here. 
<laughs> don't come here. Don't play with God like that. Don't come here. Stay out there and just ask God to pray for y'all and leave. I believe but help my own belief. I believe because I read about it. I know the Bible can't lie. I believe because I heard about it on TV. I believe because of that. But I've never seen it in my life, so I really need help with my unbelief. My personal unbelief. I believe on the surface, but I need an inner belief that means I need an encounter. So until I have that encounter, God, I'm good being on the outer court because I don't want to taint you. When it, oh, Jesus. Mm. 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 Jesus. You can't go with me. So I'm challenging y'all faith today, amen? amen? I'm challenging your faith. took the day off work or I'm in my office or whatever because you was on my spirit that deep and they're able to come to you and give you a word of knowledge because it was in the presence of God on your behalf. And the Lord told me to tell you this because I was praying for you yesterday. He told me to tell you that I was fasting for you yesterday. Those are the people you need to be in. They may not be your best friend. See, I can turn a prayer warrior into my best friend, but I can't turn my best friend into a prayer warrior. Amen. Only God will Come on, Come on. Jesus. This is something that has to be in you. And it comes through experience. But if you haven't gotten to that place yet, it's okay. You just need to pray, Lord, I believe, but help my belief. And you have to be serious about coming to that place of I'm no longer content with where I am. I need to get to another level in Him. I need to go deeper in Him. And so, how do we go deeper? Because the Bible does say that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. And so if I need to increase my faith, I need to increase my reading. If I struggle in my faith, it's because I'm not reading this enough. Because first of all, I have to recognize this is true. It's not just another book. It's not, it's not like one of those things you just pick up. You was talking about this. Uh, I had a conversation with a lady who, who uh, she drinks while reading the Bible. It relaxes me. The prayer relaxes me. I choose. <laughs> you know, so that's just my choice. I choose the prayer over the over the drink. So we had to come. But you gotta come to the place where we're in that book. I believe that the book is true. I believe everything in there is true. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. You don't have to listen. You can't tell me anything different. If it's in there, I believe it. I take it to the grave. That's me. But if you doubt that, then you're not gonna have the motivation to get that. If you have no motivation to get that, how are you going to acquire faith? Your faith will only be to the level of your level of understanding. But the Bible says to what? Lean not on your understanding. So the word is true. The word, you can't contradict the word of God at all. And no matter how you try to intellectualize it, you cannot contradict the word of God and then say it is God. Yeah, I'd rather read this motivational book by this person because I can relate to them. So if you can relate to them but can't relate to God, that's another problem. Mm. Can we just unravel this for a minute? Mm. I choose to read, I choose to read this book. Because God left this book for me. He made sure this was intact. 
People try to rewrite it and do all, but he made sure that what he needed in here is there. So I'd rather read this book than read Tony Evans' book any day, or Tony Robbins, or whoever the people are. I'll read this first. And so I'm not, I'm not trying to tell people that you don't need to read anything else, but if you're spending 20, 30 minutes a day reading Tony Robbins' book, and spending two minutes a day reading that, that's a problem. Amen. Can I can I just be real? That's a problem. Amen. So I'm challenging your faith today. If you have a hard time believing God to move, have you forgotten his promise? Have we forgotten what he has promised us in his word? Or maybe we don't know that we hadn't read it yet. I don't know. Wherever we are, I want to encourage you. Is it in here? Is it in here? But everything, everything you need is in here to build you up and encourage you in your faith. It's in here. And if we struggle with faith, now this is something that it is, we all go through this moment. And we try to talk you to your blue in the face because I want you to believe so bad. I'm just going gonna, gonna to intellectualize with you. I'm going to tell you, man, I got great faith and God and took me through some things. And because of that, man, my faith is stronger. Y'all know people, y'all ever heard that before? Oh, I done went through it and my faith is, oh, I'm on a whole nother level. But as soon as trials come, what do they do? Come on. They run back to being themselves. I call it you run back to you. Instead of running to God, you're running to you. That's because this is your makeup. You got it. It takes an intense effort. To not run back to you, but to run to him. He says, if we run into him, we're safe. That means I'm running to me, I'm not safe. But we gotta come to that place, y'all, when we acquire the faith, because the fruit speaks for itself. You can tell me, you got great faith, and I'm in the word, and I'm reading, and I'm growing, and I'm da da da. But y'all, I see you. You know what I'm saying? I see you. When you had that last issue, what happened? ran back to being you. When you had an opportunity to, to bless somebody with an encouraging word, you didn't have a word to tell them because you don't have God's word in you. All you can say was, I pray for you. Y'all know what I'm saying? No, I'm, I'm not trying to condemn. If y'all feel the way, I'm so sorry. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I'm trying to get you to a place where you're challenged to say, you know what? I need God on a level that I never knew that I needed him before. I need to get in this word. I need to get in this word because that's where I acquire faith. That's where I get the understanding of when someone comes to me with an issue, I got a word for you. And it's right out of the book. Here you go. Come on. Come on. These guys in this in this story, I'm gonna tell you something real quick, I'm gonna close. They call Jesus the teacher. What's the point of, of bothering the teacher? Why, why bother the teacher anymore? And I and I thought that was interesting because he's he is a teacher, right? He is a teacher, yes? Yes. It's not a trick question. I'm probably trying to treat you. I'm going to show y'all something though. It's not up here. Oh, I didn't put it up here. That's all right, though. That's all right. I'm still telling you. <laughs> he is a teacher. But in that situation, he didn't need a teacher. He needed a healer. So sometimes you got to really discern and listen to people when they're talking. Because sometimes people don't know how to get a prayer through. They don't know how to receive their blessing because they don't know how to address Jesus. They addressed him as a teacher when he needed him to be a healer. Mm. I need a pat that for hours, for hours. But they called him a teacher. That's why they gave up on him, because you're a teacher. You're limited to teaching. This person is dead, so why are we going to bother the teacher? See, that means they forgot or they don't even recognize him as a healer. They don't recognize him as a deliverer. That's how limited their relationship is with God. They only know him as somebody who teaches well. He's a really good teacher. Well, she's dead. Nothing you can do about that. He's a good teacher. But he's also a healer. He's also a God of restoration. They didn't know that. Because they didn't know that, they almost discouraged that man from seeking God to restore his daughter. So we got to be careful who we allow in our circle. I, I try not to get too deep, and I don't want to turn you away, but at the end of the day, when you're listening to what people say, you got to discern what's coming out of their mouth. When they're calling somebody something that is not effective for the situation, that means they're not really discerning the need. And if you can't discern the need, you're no help. So let's get to that place, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to come with me. That's my desire. But the reality is not everybody can come with you. When you got these friends or these people in your circle, discern where they are spiritually. Because if you're trying to believe God to do something that seems impossible, you cannot allow everybody in your circle. You can't just say, just grab anybody and come pray with me because I need somebody to touch me. 
Bible does say two or three. Yes. Can't say two or three any it's not just anybody i can't just go grab an, an atheist off the street i can't grab somebody who's never touched the bible and just say hey, let's agree because the bible says let's agree no let's look at what really happens in this text there's a separation that takes place from those that believe versus those that do not believe and that's when the miracles took place great things y'all it's not always about death can i and i'm gonna ask y'all a question we went to a funeral today and I said to y'all, let's go up there and pray over that body and believe God to resurrect. How many of y'all look at me like I'm crazy? <laughs> Everybody in here, right? Everybody in here looking at me like, man, Fred, you tripping. I ain't going to be. You go by yourself. Right? But, that, but I'm just, this is what I want y'all to recognize. The times that we're in, if we just relate it to that particular situation, it's the very same thing. It's the very same thing. Man, she's dead. What are you talking about, man? Just leave this situation alone. She's dead. He goes and he restores and he brings death back to life. This is the God we serve. Now I understand your doubt if I if you know if I say that because I'm not him. But if I have the faith to believe it can happen, would you go with me? <laughs> Come on, somebody, I'll tell you I'm a challenge today. If I told you I have the faith to believe, God has put it on my spirit, I have the faith to believe that this person won't get up in front of all these people at this funeral home. Do you have the faith to come with me? Now, watch this. You might have the faith to come with me, but do you have the faith to believe with me? Mm. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm challenging y'all today. I hope y'all love me after this. Because, see, that's the, that's the separating factor between seeing the miracle and only hearing about it from somewhere else. See, if you come with me because I asked you to come, that may not be enough because we're still submitting the vision at the feet of God. But if we all come together, like, I can see this person getting up. We all can believe that. I believe God will honor that. I'm crazy enough to believe it. Why? Because it's in the book. I don't have a theological answer to you. It's in the book. And I keep that simple. It's in the Bible. It happened. People got together. They believed for restoration. They believed for a resurrection power. They believed this person that was dead to get up. And because they believed together, he removed all those that had doubt. They got up. Lazarus got up. There was compassion. There was faith. Lazarus got up. And I believe that same God, Jesus, who did it then, is the same one who will do it today. He actually said, we'll do greater works than him. I believe that. But what's separating? And I talked about compassion a few weeks ago. Compassion is one thing. We've lost compassion for people as a whole. It's not a Christian thing. It's not a, a Buddhist thing. It's a people thing. We become lovers ourselves. We've lost compassion. And without compassion, there's no way to grow to a place of faith because it's all about me, right? If we can tie those things back together and just read, right? The Bible says be transformed by the renewal of our mind. If we can truly be transformed by the renewal of our mind and just believe with compassion that it works, that hope, it works, and love, it works, and faith, it works. If we just truly just realign our entire life based on those things and say, I'm living just off of that, those principles alone. I believe we'll see God move a lot more than what we're seeing. You got with me on that? Amen. So my challenge for you today is when you get home, wherever you go today, take a moment and just ask yourself, just, just talk to God. Lord, where is my faith? Is it, is it good enough to just show up or is it good enough for you to show up? good enough to where I just show up or is it good enough for you to show up to? Because he says a mustard seed. Y'all know a mustard seed is actually very powerful. There's nothing in the mustard seed that will hinder it from growing. So that means even though it's small, it's pure. And that's one thing that we, we kind of take out of context. We talk about faith of a mustard seed. We look at the size of the mustard seed and we think that's all it takes. But what's inside of that mustard seed is actually pure. It's not mixed or blended with anything else that will hinder the growth of the mustard seed. So I just want to challenge you today. It may be small, but it's the Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. I want to believe God to break silence today. Because I, I know that we all talk about faith.
all seen situations where we expected God to move and then he moved. Those situations were cool situations, but then the greater the situation got, the greater the problem got, the more our faith shrunk. And it's a cycle. It's a cycle. But I want to believe God to break the cycle. Go back one. One more. Yeah. I want to believe God to break the cycle today. If there's anybody in here who has the belief but need help with the unbelief, all eyes closed. Okay? I want us to be a moment for you. If you have belief but you need help with your unbelief, just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. situations in other people's lives that were fixed. You've seen situations in other people's lives that were just miraculous. You don't really know the details behind how it happened. You just know it happened. Now in your life, you've needed some things that happened that just hasn't manifested yet. It's caused you to doubt. And now it's, it changes how you pray. It changes how often you pray. It changes how often you read because doubt is starting to grow in you. I want to break that cycle today. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we lift up those people whose hands came up today. Those people who said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Lord, I just pray and declare right now that the side of this world, that we will come back to a place where we recognize you for who you are, your pure word, what it says you are, and the promise that you made in our lives. Father, we want to get back to the basics. Teach us how to go to that place, Lord, in you, where we can recognize you for who you are, your perfectness, your sovereignty, Lord, your, your holiness, Lord. Hallelujah. Help us to forgive ourselves for doubting you. Help us to be stronger and strengthened in your word. Give us the grace that we need to learn how to have faith. I just believe you to break cycles today, Lord. The cycle of having faith for small things, but not having faith for greater things. Lord, when you've done all things, you've defeated death. You brought people back from the grave, Lord. You healed people with leprosy. You brought those that were blind and you made them well. Those that were crippled and lame, Lord, you brought them to a place. Lord, those people who crucified yours, you brought Saul to a place where he's one of the greatest apostles ever. Lord, you can do all things. There's nothing too hard for you. So, Lord, I pray right now against that spirit of doubt. Bind it up right now in the name of Jesus. Restore to us a place of pure faith, pure belief, and a hunger for your righteousness. So everyone that rose their hands today, Lord, I pray that you would just be with them today, that you would speak to them, remind them of who you are in their life, and that you will never break the promise. And that anything that they thought was dead was just sleep. Amen. 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 Is there anyone in this place that would love to take this opportunity?